You are welcome to teaching ministry of Reverend Dr. Femi Olaleye or IKEA Christian Center Global. Get set to be at the fire. The word works. Hallelujah. The connection also between the utterance gifts and the revelation gifts. Because the tongue of the believer is tied to his eyes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? You say it, so you see it. The moment you ignite utterance, revelation flows. Hallelujah. So we'll look at that. And you will later find out that all of the gifts of the Spirit are wrapped up in utterance. Utterance is ignition. If you master utterance, you can from utterance enter any other, any other one. Glory to God. Well, let us focus on today's session. Let's conclude what we started in the morning. So we said, hallelujah, that, we're still looking at the divine mystery. Hmm. We said that Genesis to Malachi was, it's called what? Mystery, is that correct? Church, talk to me, is that correct? It's mystery. But that mystery has been unveiled and decoded where? In what? The Pauline epistles. Glory to God. And we saw that. Uh, the reason why mystery or the plan of God was hidden, all right, and was packaged in a mystery form was because of the audience. Remember that. The audience were what? Unbelieving. They did not have a heart that has the capacity to receive an undue revelation because they had not yet been born again. So what God did was that God communicated the secret in mystery Glory to God, all right, I kept the, the information in mystery and communicated it in parables and what? Typologies. Remember that? We said shadows. Is that correct? Is that correct? Then we said that for a shadow to be present, there are two things that must be seen. It is what? An image and what? Light. Then we looked at Genesis chapter 1 and we found the light. Glory to God. Genesis 1 and verse 3, all right, and God said, let there be light. We saw that that light in Genesis 1, 3 is the light of the world. And Jesus said in John 8, 12, I am what? The light of the world. Anyone that follows me shall walk, all right, shall not walk in darkness, but shall have what? The light of life. We were able to see that Genesis was written in Exodus, correct? After Exodus had happened. Because Moses wrote the book of Genesis in the wilderness. Glory to God. So that means when he wrote the book of Genesis, he was writing it after the children of Israel had come out of Egypt. Praise God. After the Passover had happened. Hallelujah. So the, uh, uh, the book of Genesis and book of Exodus, Exodus was written after Exodus had happened. Are you following what I'm saying? Aha. Uh-huh. So, and he was writing the book of Genesis and Exodus for the Jews. So, if the writings of Moses were to re- reveal the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow, it would mean the writings of Moses was the gospel but in a mystery. Are you following? It was a gospel but in a what? In a mystery. And the communication and the language was parabolic and what? In shadow form. Are you following what I'm saying? So we were able to see that when Moses put a veil over his face, what he was saying was that what? The revelation covering this thing, all right, is what you should see. But this veil over my face is a depiction of the veil in your hearts. Hallelujah. So that is why, all right, um, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, all right, let's go in there, 2 Corinthians 3, 16. We find that the veil is taken away in Christ. So in Christ, the veil over Moses' face, over Moses' teachings is unveiled and we can see the essence of what is being taught. Are you with me? Are you following? Now let's look at 2 Corinthians 3.16. Now this teaching is very, very important because, like I said in the morning session, a lot of fights in the body of Christ is tied to the writings of Moses. Amen. He started writing on Moses. In fact, I have a lot of, we have a lot of atheists, all right, who say they don't believe in God because of Genesis 1. Because you even have in theological circles, there's a fight over creationism and evolution. How many of you have heard of that? How many of you have heard of that? 
Because one says, ah, you said, your Bible says God created the world in six days. Another person comes and says, no, God created the world in, uh, I mean, the world um, came after Big Bang, and the world is 30-something billion years old. Then I remember I was talking to one brother, all right, he was trying to say he was a patriot of the Bible. And he said, Pastor Femi, you are preaching heresy. I said, why do you say that? He said, I believe, he said, he, he said, he said I believe that God created the world in six days. God can do it. I didn't say God cannot. What I'm saying is Genesis 1 is not a scientific document. God, the, Moses was not writing Genesis so that you will have a scientific understanding of how the world was created. That's why he says in the beginning, God created. He didn't tell you I created it. He said God created. The heavens are there. So he's informing you that the person who created the heavens are there is God. So that means you are supposed to believe it. Are you following? Eh? You now say, ah, but God created it by the word, by his word. By his word. Okay, so how did he do it? Give us the science of it. You can't. Are you following what I'm saying? Because the Bible is not a scientific document. Stop making the Bible an all-purpose book. It is not. The Bible has a, there is a purpose for the Bible. Hallelujah. There is a clear purpose. Okay. Where does your open second Corinthians 3 16? Before we go there, go to St. Luke's Gospel 24 27. All right. That's why the Bible is not an all purpose document. Hallelujah. Even when business is mentioned in the Bible, it's with Christ in mind. When stories, marriage, even marriage is with Christ in mind. Do you know that marriage is a typology of the relationship between Christ and his church? Hallelujah. It's a typology. So the, if you, you, to understand marriage, marriage is shadow. So who is the image of marriage? Christ. So to understand marriage, we have to look at what? Christ. Are you following? Church, are you following? Very, very important. All right. Okay. So look at it. This is Jesus. I'm beginning at what? Moses. And all the prophets. He what? Expounded unto them. In what? Church, in what? Is it in some of the scriptures? He said in all the scriptures, the things concerning what? So they were concerning who? Himself. Hallelujah. Let us now go to verse 44 of the same Luke 20, uh, Luke, uh, uh, the same Luke 20, uh, 20. For he says, and he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written where and where and where concerning who. So that means it's about him. Glory to God. When you read your Bible. Except you are eating Christ, you are not growing. Do, are you following what I'm saying? Yes. You can read the scriptures and not read Christ. Glory to God. Remember what we said in the, in the morning session? We said Bible knowledge is not cramming Bible. No. Bible knowledge is your ability to decode, glory to God, and unveil the mysteries in the scriptures. And come toward the understanding of Christ from it. So a man can quote 1,000 scriptures from the Bible and not know the Bible. Are you following? Church, are you following? Aha. Uh-huh. Very, very important. Now let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. I'm going to enter. I've not said I'm going one on to teach. But this is just preamble. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And let us look at from verse um, 12. Yeah, 12 into 18. Are we there? The bad way, that was a wonderful exhortation by Pastor Ade. Can we put our hands together for Pastor Ade? <laughs> Pastor Ade practices what he preaches. So you know that thing he's talking about. When he's talking about giving up juicy opportunities for the kingdom, he's not just harmonizing. He does it. He lives his life. Praise God. I'm his pastor, so I know. Glory to God. I said glory to God. One of our pastors also, she, I think she got a job. All right? I think it was in Dubai. They gave her an offer. Dubai. Good morning. Go and live in Dubai and be playing with the sheikh. <laughs> but because he was going to take her away from ministry, she, she said no. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. What you call testimony is a reflection of your maturity. <laughs> what you call testimony reveals your consecration. 
one of the things the devil does for those in ministry is to sponsor them out of the will of God. <laughs> well, yeah, but ticket, out of the will. <laughs> uh, one person, one man of God, he says he's in Canada. Left church in Nigeria, and he's in Canada. He's now doing Zoom meeting into Nigeria. So, to, to, I said, what, what are you doing? He got sent you to Canada. Collins are territorial. Did you hear what I said? So I said, ah, there are people, there are souls there. Did God send you there? When you relocated, are you sure your ministry angel will left with you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Or you think ministry is Bagbari? You know, okay, I know the word. Go there. You see, let me tell you something about this thing. It's spiritual. Amen. That is why ministry is in instructions. Amen. It's in instructions. Season, mini, seasons in ministries is instruction divine. If you are not instructed, don't demonstrate, oh, don't go. Stay where you are told to stay. That is where your ministry is. Glory to God. And you must get to, I know I'm diverting now, and you must get to a, a, a point in your work with God that denying such opportunities is not called um, sacrifice. What is Sacrifice. I be God saved you. You say you are, you are sacrificing. <laughs> a guy that came, he, okay, he has bed, he has a rage over, but he's smoking and drinking. You said, oh, for Jesus, I will not go with him. Go with him now. <laughs> I sacrificed, I sacrificed him because of the kingdom. Eh? The fact that it was even a temptation is a revelation of a consecration. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Look at them and say grow up. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 3, where I said now. <laughs> glory to God. What is the opposite of mystery speech? Plainness of speech. That's the opposite. So in the Pauline epistles, and in, in the epistles, because it is so saints, there are no mysteries there. What the Pauline Epistles does is that it unveils the mystery. So whenever somebody comes and is a minister of the gospel, and the person is talking mystery, 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 to saints, he's addressing the wrong uh, congregation. Because we don't preach mysteries to saints. Are you following what I'm saying? Saints have the decoder of mysteries inside them. They have the spirit of God. So what we do to saints is to teach them, glory to God, what has already been decoded in scripture. Informing them. That is why what we serve saints is revelation knowledge. What is revelation knowledge? The word revelation knowledge is talking about what? All right, apocalypse. The thing that was hidden is now brought to the light. That is what it means. Praise God. So what we feed, believers, is what was hidden, what was conceived in the Old Testament is now brought to the light to the consciousness of the believer. Are you following what I'm saying? Are you following what I'm saying? All right. So that is why grace and peace is multiplied unto you through knowledge. Through, it says grace and peace is multiplied unto you through the knowledge. That word knowledge is epignosis. Epignosis is what? Full and precise knowledge. Knowledge without shadow. Knowledge without gray areas. Precise knowledge. So grace and peace increases and multiplies over your life, the more you come into the fullness of understanding of what? Of Jesus Christ and of the Lord. No mysteries. Hallelujah. Are you following what I'm saying? Are you following what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I, I think I want to, I, I said last night and today was this. We must make sure we maintain our appetite for the simplicity of the gospel. The fact that the gospel is simple does not deny it of its power. Stop looking for weird stuff up and down. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Stop looking for weird stuff. Someone comes and says, there are 15 portals in this place. I have opened three, remain 12. You understand? Don't be, don't, don't. That, those are things, you understand what I'm talking about? Amen. No, stay simple. The word is simple. Hallelujah. The gospel is simple. All right, let's go. Second Corinthians 3. 
Let's look at that scripture and let's read it. One, two, go. It says what? We use great plainness of speech. Next verse, 13. Everybody read. Which put a veil over his face that the children of Israel should not steadfastly look to the end of that which is what? That's the law. Is that correct? Is that correct? The law. But notice it was veiled. Praise God. Now continue reading. It says, but their minds were blinded, for until this day remained the same veil, on taking away in the reading of the Old Testament. Are you noticing? So that means the veil is the concealment. Remember we talked about how that the mystery, glory to God, was hidden. Hallelujah. Remember that? All right. So that hidden or the hiding or the concealment, glory to God, of the gospel is what he's talking about here. He said, but their minds were blinded. For until this day remained the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament. Which veil is done away we are? Is not the way we are in Christ. Continue reading. Verse 15. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. What veil is upon their heart? It is the inability to understand what Moses is really talking about. Are you following? So there are many people that when they read the Old Testament, they don't understand what Moses is talking about. So they are focusing on first fruit. They are focusing on tithes. They are focusing on... Uh, uh, um, um, it, it, uh, I remember someone talked about that the, the Bible says that there was a talking serpent in, the, in, 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 um, 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 in Genesis. So what that means is that serpents could talk. But after the fall of man, serpents used, lost their ability of talking. And that serpents had hands and legs. They could walk. But when, when, um, uh, <laughs> when man fell and when corruption entered, the serpent lost his hands and, and his legs and began to crawl. Shugobondo <laughs> Sofoti. I preached that before. <laughs> in case you were wondering. <laughs> oh, I preached it in a series. <laughs> Long series. <laughs> you know that I used to read uh, Finis Dix. Finis Dix is that one that started all those rev. All those, you know now. Hallelujah. And we shared it, Priadamites. How many of you have heard of Priadamites? Priadamites. And you were sharing it. Ah, who was it? There was Priadamites? Priadamite. Then we were now seeing things that were not there. Glory to God. <laughs> but you know, what was the punishment to the serpents? What did he say? He says what? What was it? What was it? Eh? The seed of the woman shall bruise what? The head of serpent, number one. Then he now says, on, on their belly. Huh? Then, did he say, talk, to, talk about eating dust? Eh? Did he talk about eating dust? Uh, because someone said no. Someone said yes. Should we check it? Should we check it? It's there. Oh, okay, let's check it. You see, that's why you should open Bible. Oh, yeah, open Bible to Genesis 3. Oh, yeah. And now we put, oh, yeah, a cow. Everybody read it. What to go? And now we what? And between thy seed. Let me tell you, sometimes Yoruba will enter it. You understand? Instead of speaking for net. That we cannot identify. Hallelujah. You know, there's a people that are forming for you know, and you're like, where is this accent? Where is it from? You are, it's not from Nigeria. It's not from America. America said they don't understand it. UK said they don't understand it. Nigeria said they don't understand So we, where is it from, sir? Who are you? Are you a cyborg? Where are you from? <laughs> Someone just landed America like yesterday. He's not saying, you know what? You know what? You know what? What is you know what? <laughs> <laughs> and I will put enmity between the, thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt what? Huh? huh. <laughs> Amen. Continue 16. Next. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow. And I come, no, no, there's still more for the serpent. And the Lord said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art what? Above what? And above what? Upon thy belly shall thou go, and dust shall thou eat all the days of thy life. Hmm. You know that is parable. For example, who is the serpent? The serpent is what? 
is the devil. Revelation chapter 12. That great dragon, the old serpent. Is that correct? So that means serpent is a typology for who? Satan. So when the Bible said curse, that word curse is katara. It means cut off, separated from the plan of God. So when he talks about Satan being cursed, it means before these actions, he was not cursed. Glory to God. It means he, if he was, uh, uh, Satan was an angel before. Is that correct? Is that correct? So if Satan was an angel before he was cursed, what then was he doing in Eden? So to understand that, we need to ask ourselves a question. What did God create angels for? Hebrews 1. We will come back to Genesis. Hebrews 1 and verse 12. Amen. Are you there? 12. Hebrews 1, 12. What does it say quickly? Ah. Hebrews 1, 12. Okay. And as a vessel shall thou fold them up, and they shall be chained, but thou art the same, and thy ear shall not fail. Go on. Next verse. But to which of the angels said thee at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Verse 14. It now says, pay attention. One, two. Are they not all what? Uh huh. Sent for to what? Who shall be what? Hold on. Notice something. First, angels are ministering spirits. That means they are servant spirits. They serve. And who were there to serve? They were to serve, all right, minister for them or minister through them who shall be heirs of salvation. Not minister for them who are heirs of salvation. Because Adam was not yet an heir of salvation, but being an heir of salvation was one of the possibilities available to him if he believed the gospel, hallelujah, and ate of the tree of life. Are you following? So, angel Lucifer, or no, not Lucifer, that was not his name. Angel, you know, whatever his name was, praise God, hallelujah. Angel, the devil, whatever the devil was before, <laughs> you understand? The angel, glory to God, we are talking about, he was placed in the garden to serve man. Glory to God. That was the job. Angels are here now serving us. So, he did not do his job. Rather than do his job, he rebelled. Glory to God. And deceived the woman. He didn't deceive Adam. Adam was an unbeliever. (laughs) Adam was partnering with the devil in the rebellion. But the woman, she, she was innocent. She was deceived. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, he went in the rebellion with the devil. Now, the Bible now says, you are cursed. That means, you have God, that cursed means, the devil was cut out of God's plan for his creation. So the devil has no plan. That is why there is no salvation for the devil. Are you following? Come on, are you following? Then the next thing he now says, he now says, on your belly shall thou what? Uh, is that, wait, go back there, Genesis 3. Then God says, because I have done this, you are caused more than any livestock and more than any wild animal. You will move on your what? You will move on your what? Now, what is he talking about? When he says you move on your belly, he's saying that the activities of the devil will be restricted to the earth. That's why the next thing he goes on and says, and dust shall thou eat. Who was made out of dust? The man. So, what he's talking about is oppression and dominion over men. Because men by disobedience have entered into the devil's realm. The realm of darkness. And so because of this, glory to God, all right, man, amen, is going to be the subject of the devil. But he didn't stop there. The next verse, verse 15 now says, go on. 15. Now says, it gives us the men the way out. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. And between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head. And thou shalt bruise his heel. Hallelujah. 
So when he's talking about bruising the heel of the seed, he's talking about that. That's Jesus. Jesus is the seed of the woman. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. But bless God, Jesus bruises his head. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So by Jesus and by what Jesus did, the devil does not have the authority to crawl over us. Are you following what I'm saying here? Now, we're still talking shadows, right? We're still talking shadows. Now, let's look at Genesis 1.26. Because we're going to, one of the things we're going to display today is using authority. Never allow any devil to have any expression near you. Glory to God. Understand something about authority. Authority that is not exercised is as though it's not there. Authority is exercised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Authority must be exercised. Now, I always tell you, in, okay, I said, there is supplication in the spirit. Supplication has to do with you talking to God. But when it comes to exercising authority, you're not talking to God, though. You are addressing the situation. Mark eleven twenty four. Thou shalt say unto thee. That means you are addressing the situation. So there is the prayer that you are praying, where you are supplicating to God. Then there is what? Using the name, using authority to permit and not to permit. You are a king, you can do that. I said amen. 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 You can do it. Somebody sent me a message. I can't remember, but someone sent me a message and, and was telling me about how that someone, someone related to him was delivered during childbirth and they, were, uh, they, they watched the, a service where I was talking about what happened when my wife was in labor. And said that, that the exact same words I said, they said the same thing. And labor began to progress. <laughs> Praise God. There is warfare in this life. There must never ever be a scenario where a demon possessed person, somebody who has given themselves to demons, somebody who is an agent of the devil to not oppress the believer. How dare you? What are you talking about? You are born from above. They are below. Glory to God. When you are talking and giving instructions, you will say where you should talk. Not from fear. A believer that is afraid when the devil is mentioned is an ignorant believer. An ignorant believer. A believer that is timid when it comes to satanic oppression. He says, believer that is not full of the spirit. Praise God. I said, praise God. Praise God. I said, praise God. Oh. Oh. No. Glory to God. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. He said, he chamo. He said, chamo. What? To, give it to me. Hallelujah. Give it to me. Hallelujah. So if you thought it was a thought word, is it not a devil behind it? If it is a, is it not a devil? Look at them and say, is it not a devil? It's under my feet. Louder, it's under my feet. Hallelujah. Sir, so you run mad. How? No, it's not, the devil that can make me run mad does not exist. Glory to God. Glory to God. If a babalao talks his own, me, I will talk my own. Glory to God. Then we will see who is the true babalao between both of us. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. There was a time I had a vision. And in that vision, my wife was pregnant. My wife, I didn't tell my wife all this one because you see, there are some things you don't tell your wife in warfare. So one sister appeared to me in vision and said, ah, the person was in Yoruba because I could see that it was one of these, you know, um, powers, demonic spirit called powers. And this demonic spirit appeared and said, You understand? I didn't quote scripture. In the vision, I said, Hallelujah. Look at me. Won't be a da. They no born you way. For here. 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 Aya do kabaya. Likata. Si kotebele. I have a sword in my mouth. <laughs> it's for cutting. Glory to God. No weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. 
Hallelujah. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I am not of the world that the devil cross over. That he oppresses. No, sir. No, sir. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Mm-mm. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, let's look at that scripture. Let me show you something, right? Genesis chapter 1. Running from pillar to post, let us pray. Oh, the devil is against me. Yo, let us pray. Yo, it is the devil that's supposed to be running pillar to post concerning your matter. When they mention your name, they should have an attack. The devil is supposed to be seeing a therapist on your case. She needs a shrink. Oh, yeah. Second, I don't know what to do again. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't know what to do about this brother. When he's speaking in tongues, the everywhere is shaking. Where do we hide from him? Praise God. You don't understand? You need to get to a point where devils counsel themselves. Where are you going? Where are you going? Is this as you want to go? No. We agreed that the strategy is to leave him alone. Maybe if we leave him alone, his spiritual life will go down. Maybe. Just leave him alone. Because if you trouble him, his problem. Didn't you see what happened to the, the gingo? <laughs> Didn't you notice what happened to them on Luciano? <laughs> and Pichichi. <laughs> see what happened when they came back from attacking him? Some people say, ah, when demons are attacking, don't be asleep. So this is baby revelation, I beg. Ah, so I'm sleeping. What? Listen, my body may be asleep, but my spirit is not sleeping. <laughs> Where are my angels? Are they on strike? <laughs> eh? Eh? See, you must be awake oh, by 12 midnight. Because when they come, hi, 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 hi. Hold up, Ashita. What did I say before I slept? Did I give instructions? Did I speak words? If I did, what happened to those words? What happened to the words? Did they lose their potency because I'm sleep? My body sleeping. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Ibu ota, iba ota, kini ota. My friend, if I give a divine sentence about it, it's done. Glory to God. Because where the word of a king is, there's power. So am I a king? So if I am a king, my word is a sentence. Hallelujah. It's a verdict. I have declared it and the angels of God will enforce it. Shalom, I'm a king with power. Now let's look at this. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have what? Let them have what? Over what? And over what? Over the... And over, and over, that creepeth upon the earth. Now, many people have read this and thought that what is being is talking about here is dominion over physical fish, and physical cattle, and physical fowl. <laughs> so someone said, "Oh, the dominion we have. You see, man has dominion over the. You know, the God gave man the dominion. You know, over fish and stuff." I'm like, "What do you mean? What are you talking about? Fish?" Listen, every place in the Gospels and the New Testament, dominion is talked about. It is never talked about as being over fish. Because this word dominion is the equivalent of it is kingdom and authority. Because the word dominion here is the Hebrew radar. Radar. And radar means authority. That's what it means. Authority. That's what it means. Luke 10, 19. Because Moses is speaking in parables. Now, Jesus, in his communication of Moses, he uses something different. Look at Luke 10, 19, because it says, Behold, everybody want to go. Notice, notice, notice. Jesus uses the same figure of speech Moses uses. Serpents, scorpions. He uses animals. But he's not talking about physical serpents. Hallelujah. Because of what he said next. And over all the power of the enemy. So serpents and 
as scorpions are metaphors for what? The powers of the enemy. Next. And nothing shall by what? Stand up on your feet and say this with me. We have not finished. Ah, I'm annoyed. Kaya Loba Hasada Shabalaya. Read this thing again. One, two, go. Hold on. You know, hold on. You see this word power. That word power there is the Greek dunamis. Dunamis. So, I've taught you. No place in the scripture does the Bible say that demons don't have their dunamis. Dunamis is not exclusive to believers. What is exclusive to us is dunamis of the Holy Ghost. Are you following? So, dunamis is just a Greek word. Amen. So, there is demonic dunamis, which is demonic power. So, this word here, behold, I give unto you power, is the Greek exousia. It is authority. <laughs> Author- so, that means as believers, we have authority over devil's dunamis. Do you understand? So, the devils have their dunamis. They can oppress other non-believers. But when they come to you, you will use your exousia to tell them, not here. Say, not here. Not here. Not here. Not here. Not here. here. Hallelujah. And understand this. If you find yourself in the presence of a demonically possessed person, listen, Stop all this. Who are you? Where are you from? What is your name? Address. What's all that one for? Amen. Jesus only did it once. You don't make a tradition out of what appears once. There is no apostle that was doing what is your name? Who are you? Tell us more about yourself. Nobody was in that. Amen, no? Amen, no? It is, get out. Do your hand like this. See, do your hand like this. I want you to practice it. You do like this. Out. Do it again. Out. Do it again. Let me tell you something. Your posture is important to devils. Because devils, they are beings. If they smell fear, that's if they smell fear. So, when some people are casting out devils, do you know why that devil has not gone? Fear. So the guy is manifesting. Wow. Ooh. Then again, some of these movies, they make the devil look more distant. Yes, Praise God. Fear. Hallelujah. I remember one time, I was dealing with a demonic possessed person. And the person was being violent. I was walking towards, he was coming. I was walking towards. Well, be that. Come and try it now. Ah! Out in Jesus' name. What are you talking about here? Come out in Jesus' name. And you're not coming out because of my righteousness, but because of the righteousness of Jesus. Then again, be careful of where devils try to play that trick, where they are trying to talk about your, your sin. Then you now begin to bat down, thinking that a devil can say it's not coming out because you sinned. It's a lie, oh. The devils come out because the authority of Jesus is potent. Glory to God. Glory to God. The authority of Jesus is why devils come out. Not your perfection. Hallelujah. So, one thing the devil does is that they switch into the ministry of accusation. Because if they can switch into that ministry of accusation and get you in guilt and condemnation, you will enter into fear. And in fear, authority is not exercised. So, the devil's strategy is to move you from faith into fear because they know that when you are in fear, you cannot be bold. And when there's no boldness, you can't exercise authority. Are you following what I'm saying? Are you following what I'm saying? Very, very important. Say, I have authority. I have authority. Over all devils. I have authority. Over all devils. I don't need. Louder. I don't need. Special preparation. Special fasting. Special process. 
to cast out devils. All I need is salvation. All I need is salvation. What about that? All I need is salvation. Rejoice with the Holy Ghost. Sit down for a moment. Hallelujah. Bakadi <laughs> Baye. The devil is in trouble. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, it says here, so we find that every single time authority is mentioned. All right? Dominion is mentioned. It's over devils. Praise God. I said, praise God. So, when people talk about kingdom, I have heard people talk about kingdom, and they are talking about cars and houses. I've never heard people talk that, they say, this is kingdom, and, and the kingdom they are talking about. No, kingdom is not in material things. It's not. Now, God is not against us having material things, but kingdom is not in material things. Kingdom is not in private jets. Private jet is not bad, but that's not kingdom. Praise the Lord. We cannot and should not get materialistic. Materialism is carnality. It's carnality. The Bible says righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That is the what? Kingdom of God. Praise God. I said praise God. I said praise God. So the dominion is over demonic spirits. Praise God. Dominion. Turn to Mark 16, 17. You are going to find out that the very first sign of those that believe in Jesus is dominion over demonic spirits. Very first, even before speaking in tongues. Before speaking in tongues. Mark 16. Everybody read verse 17. One, two, go. What does it say? Oh, yeah. mm. Read it again. Yes. Oh, stop. Listen. Do you know what it means to cast? That word cast, ekbalo, it means to expel. Now, you need to understand that communication. You see, the whole world lied in darkness over, under the power of the evil one. Then Jesus, by his death, burial, and resurrection, raises up a new nation, one that has never existed before, called the new creation, the church. And releases these people of light into a place that has been under darkness. Now, the territory was controlled by darkness. Are you with me? Are you following? Now, there is a release of children of God, sons of God into that territory. Now, what the sons of God in that territory are now to do is to advance the lights. Such that the kingdom of light begins to take over territory that was under the control of the kingdom of what? The kingdom of darkness. Now, this territory is not the space, the physical inch. The territory is men's hearts. Because the darkness we are talking about was in the hearts of where? Of men. So, the mandate is, once I have received the life of God and the light of God, I am to look for somebody in darkness and light him up. Praise God. If there is a demon operating there, what do I do? Ek balo. Cast it out. Because casting out devils, glory to God, is a manifestation of kingdom advancement. It means that by casting out that devil, I have uh, collected ground from Satan. Because that man's heart and that man's body was a place where the devil had dominion. By expelling that devil and putting the spirit of God inside that man, I've recovered ground. Are you following what I'm saying? So he said, cast out devils. Matthew 10, turn there, you see this again. Matthew 10. <laughs> Matthew 10, verse 1. Look at what it says. Can we read one to go? And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them what? Power. Against. Power. Stop. Uh, stop. Stop. Something, that thing is bubbling in my spirit. That against. He said, he gave them power against. So that means the power has a purpose. Amen. It is against unclean spirits. 
He gave them power against. Power against. That was his authority. Power against unclean spirit. To what? To what? To cast them out. And to what? All manner of sickness and all manner of what? You see that? To heal. To cast out devils and to heal. All manner of diseases. So that means in the healing ministry, they will be casting out devils. Praise God. No, someone, I was watching Pastor Chris healing school. You know, I used to be, I used to serve in the English school when I was a medical student. So many of the things I did do now, I had first-hand information. I lay, my, I lay hands, I was inspired by Pastor Chris and Benny. Is the truth. I used to watch there. Ah, we sit down. You know, after we, what we, I used to do it was to take to Clark. So we took their history. This is about, about far back 20 years ago. It's 2022. 2003. So we're there, we'll be taking their history and stuff like that. Then when we take their history, they will go inside. And we'll not be, we'll not be hearing things like, like as though there is a war going on. Because that time the healing school, they'll be enclosed in one kind of place. Then people will be watching the main auditorium. You'll be ah! I mean, loud voice, as though, ah! As I say, come on, yeah, yeah, ow, yeah, yeah, oh, ah, that's what it was. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Casting devils out is very connected to healing the sick. So many a times, when you want to heal the sick, it is not out of place to cast out devils. Oh, he has a fever, no problem. Thou spirit of infirmity, come out in Jesus' name. You most likely will not be wrong doing it. Praise God. He said he gave us authority against. So you can see where authority and dominion is mentioned, it is in connection to what? Demonic spirits. Say aloud, I have power. I have authority over demonic spirits. I have power. I have authority over demonic spirits. I have power. I have authority over demonic spirit. Now, what is the connection and the role prayer pray, plays in the exercise of authority? I've thought this before, right? Praise God. Now, there are times, let me give you this example. A general of um, who supervises a battalion of a thousand people has authority over that battalion. Is that correct? So the authority he has is the right to instruct them to do this or to do that. Is that correct? Now, the battalion has the weapon, the guns. Praise God. They have the tanks and they have the weapons and the bombs. So the battalion is the power that the general has. Are you following what I'm saying? Are you following what I'm saying? Uh huh. So that means that general can direct the power, all right, as he wishes, using his authority. Oh, come on now. You understand that? Okay, I remember I was watching this scene from Game of Thrones. This um, Cersei. Cersei was talking with that guy that was like the Secret Service guy. Yeah, Lord Billish. <laughs> Some people can pass the exam on that. that that's it. So, Lord Baelish was trying to talk about power being something, 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 something. Then the lady was trying to show him what power was. So she said to the soldiers, soldiers, seize him. They seized him. Then she, he told, she told them, move back. Turn left. They turn left. Turn right. They turn right. Then she said to the guy, power is power. Now, did she have any might in herself to attack the guy? She had authority over the power. To direct it in what direction she wants. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, God gave you authority in Christ. Then he gave you power through the Holy Ghost. Acts 1, 8, turn in there. Acts 
chapter 1 and verse 8. <laughs> There's a science to releasing the power of God. There's a knowledge to it. Praise God. I said, praise God. See, it's one of the reasons why, as a believer, you have to be always prayed up. Always prayed up. Speaking in tongues is one of the, you know, speaking in tongues is the easiest way to connect to that living well inside you. So when you are talking about Tokura, Masiku, Kabakura, Kashata, Hokoto, Bakata, Ekokote, Uski, Uska, Jitu, Bandu, Kaha, Juku, Zika, Kundriatika, Tokushki, you are talking to what are you doing? You are making power available. Hallelujah. All right? Now, you see something. Acts 1 8, look at what he says. He says, But he shall receive what? Power. After that, what? The Holy Ghost. It's come what? Upon you. So that power comes into you. Because the Spirit of God has taken up precedence where? In you. All right? And the Bible lets us understand in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, it says, according to the power that is what? At work where? In you. So there is a power at work where? In you. But James now shows us something. In James chapter 5, all right? He says, the effectual, heartfelt, continued prayer of the righteous man, verse 17, is what? Dynamic in what? All right? Turn here. He says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth what? Can we have this in Amplified? Let me, let's see. Can we have it in Amplified? Amplified version. All right? Do we have it? Do we have it? No, Amplified. Which one is HSBC? <laughs> <laughs> Ah, if you don't have it, tell me. Oh, we don't have it. Okay. Does anybody have the Amplified Bible here? I want us to read it. There's a reason why. So, you have power. Bring it now. You have power in you. Because of the Holy Ghost, right? Bring it. Now, look at this. Amen. It now says here, listen. Confess to one another, therefore your faults, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins. And pray also for one another that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. Listen. The earnest, heartfelt, continued. This you know? The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes Tremendous power, what? Available. Dynamic in its working. Okay. Why is it making power available? Available from where? Where the Ephesians 3.20 said the power was. It's at work where? But we need the power of God to be released in, um, into um, our issues or challenges that we may have. Because, for example, for Elijah, what was Elijah doing? Elijah was praying that he should not rain. Rain is not something that happens inside Elijah's heart. No. Rain is something that happens in the environment. Is that correct? So, Elijah was praying to release and make power available to stop rain. Praise God. So, what do we need to do? Every believer has to learn the culture of continued, persistent, heartfelt praying in the spirit. Not mindless praying, no. Continued, persistent, heartfelt, what? Praying in the spirit. Thank God for the 24 hours with God people are doing. But let me tell you something. Oh, glory to God. Consistency is more powerful than intensity. In the spiritual, consistency is more powerful than what? Intensity. It is good to do 12 hours with God, 24 hours with God is fine. But what will help you is to have one hour, two hours every day. Consistent. Praise God. Consistency speaks to habits. Consistency speaks to culture. Praise God. I said, praise the Lord. Consistency. When you speak in tongues and you make power available, 
Then when you start using authority, that power begins to manifest, 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 manifest. So you pray long so that you can exercise authority in public using few words. When your words in public are long, it means your words in private, in prayer, are short. Did you hear what I said? So you pray long in secret so that when you come in public, you will need just few words and the power will move. Are you following what I'm saying here? Are you following what I'm saying here? So very, very, very important. One major aspect of our dominion is that we have dominion over evil spirits. Praise God. Praise God. So we talked about how that in the Old Testament, Genesis to Malachi, that is where we have the mystery and the shadow. Now I want to show you one more thing before we close for this session. One more thing. Look at them and say one more thing. One more thing. Hmm. So I have shown you the unveiling and decoding of the mystery in dominion. Serpents, scorpions, and all of that. How that is referring to the demonic spirit, praise God. But Moses used parabolic language to communicate it. Now, I want to now let us look at when it talks about the temple of God. What did God use in the Old Testament to communicate Christ in you, the hope of glory, when he talked about building temples? Second Samuel. Are you learning anything here? Yes, Church, are you learning anything here? Yes, All right. Second Samuel chapter 7. Are you eating good? Yes, I said, are you eating good? Yes, Is this, this diet good for your soul? Yes, <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Second Samuel 7 and 3. Can we read one to go? Second Samuel 7 and 3. Okay, wait. Let's start from verse 1. Context. Second Samuel 7, 1. And it came to pass when the king sat in his house, and the Lord had given him what? Rest round about from all his enemies. Next verse, everybody read. He says what? Well, oh, oh, hold on. I, I think before we go on, I, can you see David's heart? Can you see his heart? David said unto Nathan, see now, I dwell in a house of cedar. But the ark of God, there are many people that when God blesses them materially and they have rest on all sides, they don't remember the house of God. You will now begin to hear them say, we are the church. Have you noticed that people that say those things they usually say it when their, their, their stomach is full. Moment they've gone to UK, they are now in Canada or America, you understand? Their accent have changed, you understand? They are earning some dollars. You now begin to hear funny things. David was not like that. David got into rest and he was remembering. He said, how can it be that I am living in a house of cedar, but the tabernacle is intense? Do you understand that mindset? That is, that is such a wonderful mindset. If every believer had this mindset in their local church, their local church will reach more nations. More nations. This is the mindset of generosity. Generosity towards God. Generosity. There are a lot of believers that are not generous towards God. They are stingy towards God. They are stingy towards God. Hallelujah. I'm not talking about this because I need your money personally. No, I don't. I'm a rich man by the grace of God. No, I'm not confessing. I'm just, it's the truth. <laughs> I'm okay. I mean, you, you understand? Praise God. I know that before I'm 40, I'll be a millionaire in dollars. By the grace of God. I'm, I'm on that track by God's grace. Millionaire in dollars. I'm not just, I'm telling you. Amen. Amen. So when I'm talking of journalists, I'm not saying so I give to me. I don't get paid salary like that. I just have allowance. The allowance I give it to me, you know, and stuff like that. 
So I'm not telling you this for personal devil. I'm telling you because it's the word. Generosity towards God. There are many people that are generous towards babe, but they are not generous towards God. There was a young man. He was a student. This time was a student. So he had this girl he liked. But this girl did not like him that much. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. You know that dynamics, that part of man is terrible. Praise the Lord. So this lady showed him Pepe. <laughs> One day, I saw him. Listen to I saw him. He carried a farm like this on his head. <laughs> farm, big farm on his head. Oxford, where are you going? I'm going to room something, something. He said, ah, PF. I just thought maybe I should just buy a fan, you know, because I just noticed the last time I went there, the room was hot. Do you understand? And he carried fan on his head. <laughs> Hallelujah. This thing still broke. It did not work. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Every man has the capacity to be generous. But you have to be generous towards God. Hallelujah. Towards his David, look at his mindset. And do you know when we read on, we find out that before David died, David left a lot of gold, materials for the building of the temple. Generous towards God. What a man. Now let's continue reading. Pay attention. Verse 3. Everybody read. It says, And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in thy heart. For the Lord is what? With thee. Continue reading. Uh And it came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came unto Nathan saying, hold on, whenever you see the word of the Lord here, it's Christ too. It's Christ. It is what? It's Christ. The word of the Lord is the revelation of Christ. (laughs) And the word of the Lord came unto Nathan saying, next verse, go and tell my servant David, thus said the Lord, shall thou build me an house for, listen, Remember the mystery that was hidden from the foundation of the world is what? Christ in what? Christ in what? So the house is what? Who is the house? Who is the house God wanted to live in? Man! But David wanted to build him a physical house for him to live in. Hmm? Now look at it. Go and tell my servant David. Thus said the Lord, shall thou build me an house for me to dwell in? Next verse, verse 6, everybody read. He says what? Whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, but I've walked in a tent and in a what? Tabernacle. Next verse. In all the places wherein I've walked with all the children of Israel, Spake I a word with any of the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to feed my people, Israel, saying, why build ye not, not a house of cedar? Next verse. Pay attention. Hey. Now, therefore, so shall thou say unto my servant David, thus said the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people, over Israel. Next verse. Let's read. Nine. And I was with thee, with us where thou wert. And I have cut off all thy enemies out of thy sight. And I have made thee a great name, like unto the name of the great men that is on the earth. Next verse, verse 10. Everyone read. That they may dwell in a place of their own. And move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them anymore as before time. Stop. This is a, uh, what do you call it now? A parable. The children of Israel are a typology of the church. And the place, glory to God, where we are going to go and we will not move anymore and the children of wickedness will not afflict us anymore, any longer is in Christ. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, let's go on. Next verse, verse 11. And since... The, and as the, since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, and I've caused thee to rest from all thy enemies, also the Lord tell thee that will make thee an house. Go on, next verse. Verse 12. Everybody want to go? Go on. I establish his kingdom. Go on. For 
for, for. That's the key word. That means it was not Solomon. Because Solomon did not reign forever. But whose kingdom shall reign forever? Whose kingdom is that? Christ. Now, Solomon is a typology because the word Solomon is from the Hebrew Shalomon. Shalomon. It means son of peace. Praise God. Son of peace. Now, what is Jesus or who is Jesus called? He is called what? The prince of peace. Hallelujah. He's called the prince of peace. So, though Solomon built a house, is a typology. The person who was actually building the house God wanted to dwell in is Jesus. And Jesus tells us this. Look at this quickly. Hallelujah. Are you learning something? So, you see, when we sing songs, our songs must communicate these realities. So, we cannot be singing, Oh God, make me a home. Make my life a home for you. Oh, um, there's one song that like that. What's that song? Eh? Yes. Come and make my heart your home. Christians singing that. Come and be everything, something, 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 something. So, you understand? A home for you. Oh. Someone says, oh. Someone says, oh. Your, your heart can be a house, not a home. Hey, 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 leave that side. You see? That's not theology. Hallelujah, somebody. Listen to what I'm telling you. We are to sing the word, not our feelings. Let me say it again. We are to sing the word, not our word, feelings. Our feelings we catch up. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I don't feel like God's house. It doesn't matter. Sing it. It's the word. Amen? <laughs> so when I say it's over now, now look at this. In Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, Jesus Christ, is called, Jesus Christ is called what? The Prince of Peace. So he is the son of David that God is referring to. He said after D. So the son of David. Jesus is called two things. He is called what? The seed of Abraham and the son of David. Why is he called the seed of Abraham? Because it is to him the promises made to Abraham were truly made to. Why is he called the son of David? Because the, 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 the throne of David is his birthright. Hallelujah. And because he is the custodian of the throne of David, by virtue of that, uh, what do you call it? Uh, because by virtue of that inheritance, Jesus has the right of kingship on earth. Glory to God. So by being the seed of Abraham, he has rights to bring salvation to those who are descendants of Abraham. Hallelujah. And by being this one, the son of David, he has right to bequeath authority to those that are after the kind of David. Who is the, uh, oh, those after the kind of David? Those are after the faith of David. Who are those after the kind of Abraham? Those are after the faith of Abraham. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Now look at this quickly. Now look at Ephesians chapter, no, um, yeah, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 20. Can we read one to go? Uh huh, go on. Uh-huh, go on, please. Uh-huh. So, you know, so, who, so who is the habitation? We are the ones that are the habitation, right? Right? Now, let me show you something. Where Jesus tells us he was going to build this temple. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? Now, how many of you have noticed that as you are hearing the word of God, you are not feeling tired? Right? You are learning, your spirit man, all right, is plugged in. Now, that is if you, uh, let me tell you something about tiredness and spiritual things. When your spirit man is drawing from the light that is coming during a sermon, you will find out that your focus will not be on what your body is feeling. 
Are you following what I'm saying? But when you are lost focus and you are distracted, you begin to be conscious of everything your body is telling you. Praise the Lord. It's like this. I remember there was a time, oh, you, you, everybody has gone through that. When you want to watch a movie, even if you are tired, you open your eyes and watch it. Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. But when you want to pray, you say, ah, I'm so tired. Or oh, I have gone to videos. And doing the video when you are praying, you were so tired and sleepy. But when they said, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You are alive. You just see that? So what has happened? The flesh deceived you. <laughs> praise God. I said, praise God. Now look at this quickly. Matthew 16, 18. <laughs> then we look at Mark 14, 58. Matthew 16, 18. Can we read what to go? It says what? And I say also unto thee, that thou art what, Peter? And upon this rock I will build what? So now, David wanted to build something. Jesus comes and says, I will build my church. In Ephesians 2, we saw that that church is an habitation of God. And it is what? A, uh, what do you call it now? Uh, an aggregation of saints, those who have believed in Jesus. Is that correct? Now, Jesus now says, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Now, go to Mark 14, 58. You will now begin to find that this temple, this church that Jesus is talking about building is one that is made without hands. What David wanted to build was a temple made with hands. But Jesus is talking about one that is made without what? Hands. Now let's look at it. Mark 14, 58. One, two, go. Can we read? It says what? Oh, no, this was the accusation brought to Jesus. Against Jesus. We heard him say, I will destroy what? I will destroy what? That is whose temple is he referring to? The temple of Solomon. The one Solomon built. Which means that temple is not what was being referred to by God. Are you following? He said, I will destroy this temple that is made with ants. And within what? Three days. I will build what? <laughs> Another. <laughs> no, maybe that ants. Glory to God. What that means is that the resurrection of Jesus was the completion of the temple of God. When Jesus Christ rose the, from the dead, that was when the temple of God was actually inaugurated. And that temple is the hearts of men. Let's end with this. Hebrews chapter 9. Now, guys, I want to ask you a question. I want to calm down, but this session calm down. Hallelujah. Can we put our hands together for our media team? <laughs> Hallelujah. Awesome people. Praise God. Guys, think with me. Is there a temple of God in heaven? Amen. So when the Bible talks about Jesus went into the Holy um, to heaven to offer sacrifices, what does it mean? You mean that Jesus carried blood to heaven and was sprinkling it on? Praise the Lord. Church, now talk to me now. You know when you come to church, you come with your brain, right? <laughs> Jesus washed away our sins. He didn't wash away our brain. So, your brain is important. Glory to God. There are some churches you need to leave your brain outside. Ah, yes, you need to leave your brain outside. Amen. 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 When someone comes and tells you that if you want your child to have a good home, come as $1,000, your brain needs to be outside to come out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ah, there are some funny things in this church. In church, oh, hallelujah. How, does, how do you use $1,000 for virginity? Imagine for my child to marry a badge as you show $1,000. How does that affect anything? <laughs> Praise God. Is it that the angels see the dollars and say, Dollar, hey, ah, my God, I've never seen this in my life. <laughs> 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 Praise God. 
Praise the Lord. You have to leave your brain outside. But it's not supposed to be like that. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. As ministers, we must live on the handed things outside. If the church needs money, say we need money. The Spirit of God will touch people to give. Amen. If, the, if he's touching them and they refuse to be touched, he will use somebody outside to meet that need. I have seen God use Muslim to meet the need of a church when the people in the church refuse to yield to the touching of the Spirit. Hallelujah. But to not be doing, you understand, you see something, something, something. No, 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 no. Now, is there the working of financial miracles? Yes, there is that. Ah, there's focus on financial miracles. I work it very regularly. I'll give you an example. There was a young man. He's in the kingdom. He may be watching. Years ago, he wanted to travel. He married someone who was a citizen over there. And he wanted to travel. But because she, they married, but he was not a citizen, she invited him to come, but I don't know how they did it. But he needed to have money in his account or something like that before they would let him travel. I hope you understand that. So he needed that money. And he has never seen that kind of money in his entire life before. And he came to me. So he was here, married, for like eight months and had not gone to meet his wife. I hope you understand what I'm saying. It can be a very difficult scenario. So, I wanted to pray for him. And you know, <laughs> I wanted to pray. The bar of course, I wanted to pray. Then the Lord said, tell him to give. All right. And Lord told me to tell him, tell him give his amount. I heard it. If I didn't hear it, I wouldn't have told him. But you're getting into the zone of working of miracles. Instructions are instructions. So I told him, this is what the Lord said you should do. Fifty thousand dollars don't mean anything. So he gave, he gave 50K. And I declared and prayed as we instructed. He gave it to church. It wasn't to me. Four days after we prayed, this guy calls me and says, ah, Pastor, I've gotten the money. I've paid for my ticket. And I'm traveling. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just like that, it happened. So you see, it wasn't the money. It is that spirit-inspired instructions, when obeyed, unleash the power of God. Are you following what I'm saying? It's like when Elijah, Elijah, tell, Elijah told Naaman to go and wash at the pool. There was nothing special about the pool. It was the instruction of the spirit. There is no theological explanation. Are you following? That we say, this is the verses of scripture that pull what, you understand what I'm saying? It's like when Jesus wanted to heal a man that was blind, and instead of saying, eyes open, he didn't say that, he spat on sand, mixed it with saliva, then slapped it on the man. If I do that now, would you say something's wrong with me? <laughs> but you see, so there is that. But it is the Lord that knows the hearts of men, that knows when it is the instruction of the spirit, and when somebody is trying to raise money. Are you following? And for one, when somebody makes it a culture, something is wrong. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every single time, the instruction is so seed. My brother, something is wrong with you. Amen. I said amen. amen. I said amen. amen. All right. Where that side you open? Hebrews 9. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 9. And verse 20 to 22. And we close. But we are coming. Uh, evening session is 4 o'clock. So I want you to have time freshen up, drink water. Because we will need it for tonight's session. <laughs> Amen. Ah, no, you need Because I have seen the night session. Hallelujah. I've seen it. You understand? So, we will just do this in words. We will have time to teach the word and to minister to people. I will try my best to make sure I touch, I reach everybody. All right? Try and reach everybody. Glory to God. I mean, try and reach everybody. Trying to reach everybody. <laughs> and give words as inspired. Pastor Fuya, I remember. 2017. Was it not 2017? I gave this man of God a word. 2017. About doors opening internationally. That we earn in foreign currency and all that. He received it in 2017. Amen! And I noticed he was always excited. I was like, the opportunity didn't come in 2017. 
in 2018, in 2019, in 2020, 2021. And now here's the funny thing. Every time I minister to him, the same word was distinct I was saying. When I get to him like that, that word, I will pick it. That means the thing is still hanging. Praise the Lord. Then 2022. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. He happened. Hallelujah. His case is different. <laughs> Amen. Now, what have I found? I found out something that, listen, as you will learn this night, you can give people things, not physically, but spiritually. You can hand things over to people by the Spirit. Are you following? Last year, CRC, we had my son, Dr. Bode, and his wife. Hallelujah. By the Spirit, I just called them out. And I said, this is your last CRC in Nigeria. Just like that. This is your last CRC in Nigeria. And I told them that I see you watching the next year's CRC online from the United Kingdom. They are watching online from the United Kingdom. Now, those of you who are in Nigeria, you are not less because someone is in UK. Because that's one thing. Some people are kinda. They will now begin to say, when is my own? I will be watching it from... Um... <laughs> Amen. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> they don't they want to... Ah, PF, no, calm down. Provision, listen to me. Provision is in the instruction, not in the location. That is why God was able to feed an Elijah, amen, with ravens by a brook because he was instructed to be there. Then later, he was told to go to a widow woman who did not have enough food and provision met him there because he was instructed to be there. Are you following? Are you following what I'm telling you? Instruction. In the year 2020, I had an open vision in my room. The Lord Jesus came to my room, and there was an angel with him. That angel is the angel of this ministry. I'm not saying this because Kenegi wrote a book called I Believe in Vision, and he too saw it was No, I'm telling you, I had a vision. And the Lord was there, and the angel of the ministry was there. It was that vision that he told us to spread. <laughs> spread. I said, Lord, <laughs> I said, don't give me that job. Ah, we are in 48 Ugunla no job. Is it Ugunla no job? 48 Ugunla no job. Spread out. Where's the money? Then, that year, 2019, because before 2020, 2019, our total income as a church, I don't think it was up to 14 million. It was just about 14 million. So I will spread to where? I'm believing God fervently to pay the rent of this um, place that we are, <laughs> you are talking of which you spread. And it was giving, it gave me the lowdown, spread. This is what I wanted to do. And he mentioned the places we are going to. Mentioned America, he mentioned United Kingdom. Then he mentioned states in you know, he talked about Abuja, he talked about Ogun State. He said, Go there. He said, I've given you do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. The angel I have handed over to your ministry. And he mentioned certain things about the angel. He will cause this to happen, he will cause this to happen, he will cause this to happen. He gave me details. Ah! He said, Babao. So I am not in doubt. I know what he said. Glory to God. Financially, we're not where we used to be. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Amen. I've seen it work. So I understand that there is a Lord Jesus who is the Lord and commander of the spiritual harm forces of heaven. Glory to God. And with him, Nothing is impossible. So if he instructs it, then I should obey it. Hallelujah. 
Pastor Dara is dancing at, at Willow at the back. So Hebrews 9.22. Quickly, and I close. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Pastor Dara is my police. She's the one that makes sure. <laughs> Hebrews 9.22, quickly. Amen. No, let's start from verse 20. Quick, let's read it one to go. I'm sorry, that's in 922. Hebrews 9, 10 to 11. Let's rise up on our feet. I can come down now. <laughs> I've tried. Sandy. Uh-huh. Hebrews 9, 11. Can we read? 9, 10. Everybody read one to go. Yes. Impose on them. Anti what? Uh huh. Christ being come. Uh-huh. By a greater amount, what? Perfect tabernacle. Not made with what? Hold on. Which tabernacle is not made with hands? Eh? 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 Which tabernacle is not made with hands? You've seen the context now. Amen. Is man. Is that correct? So, but Christ being come an high piece of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that to say not of what? This building. this building. That is what? The temple of Solomon. Next verse, 12. Neither by the blood of goats and calf, but by his own blood, he entered in what? Into what? Notice. Oh, la baka su kodele. Yeah, da, da. Hey, hey, hey. He said, listen, he entered in. To the holy place, having what? So he entered after he obtained. Question. Where did he enter? Where did he enter? Where did he enter? Colossians 1.27 Christ in you. Hallelujah. So, hallelujah. Jesus rose up from the dead and ascended into our hearts. Glory to God. I will say that again. Jesus rose up from the dead and by his blood ascended into our hearts. (laughs) Glory to God. And the ascension of Jesus into our hearts is the final fulfillment of the agenda and the purpose of God that was healed from the foundation of the world, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Shout hallelujah, somebody. Rejoice in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Say this with me. I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost. Christ lives in me. I am the temple of the Holy Ghost. Christ lives in me. I am the temple of the Holy Ghost. Christ lives in me. Christ lives in me. Christ lives in me. Shout glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we just sit our hands and talk in tongues for a few minutes? Ah. <laughs> he has ascended into my heart. Glory. 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 My heart is his throne. 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 Hallelujah. Shout Christ in you. The hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, 
the hope of glory the man that has eaten Jesus Jesus has entered that man the man that believes in Jesus Jesus has entered that man glory to God <laughs> hallelujah now listen when you hear such realities your response has to be joy are you following what I'm saying? It has to be joy. Come on, rejoice in the Holy Ghost. Hey! Alright. We are going to take a 35 minutes break. Thank you for listening. We are sure that you have been blessed. For more messages, kindly search for our Telegram channel using the link t.me slash oikia God has blessed you.